All right, welcome to Dean Bodie Show. Dan, 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 Dean Bodie Show. Hey, everybody, what's going on? How's it going? Hey, and um, you know, let's do our thing today. Who's the good girl? Good girl, Bodie. Good, good girl. Good girl, Bodie. She's the best girl in the world. Oh, yeah. DeanBodie.com. 800-878-9698. Bodie Hotline. Fun line. Call the Bodie line and keep it simple. Say something fun on the Bodie Fun Hotline, and we'll make it a feature on the show. That's it. Say something fun, baby. Oh, yeah. So, Bodie's going through it. I'm going through it. We're all going through it. And I hope you guys are doing okay out there. And, uh, hey, welcome to Dean Bodie Show. Let's get things rolling. So much to talk about. It's unbelievable. But first, DeanBodie.com is the website. The links are on there. I want to get you over to the podcast, Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. The social link will blast you right over to the YouTube channel, D-E-A-N-B-O-D-I Space Show YouTube channel. The maintenance guy had to come and fix the sink. Who is it? It's the plumber. I've come to fix the sink. And he came in with his dirty work boots. I mean, seriously? Do you have a brain in your head? Check your shoes. Put the little footies on. Listen, maybe the bigger companies do the little footies or whoever's going over there in Beverly Hills. There's no way they're coming in there with the work boots all full of yuck and mud and dirt and schmutz. So he comes in and look, I mean, where I live, this is not living high on the hog, but hey, this is a Dean Bodie haberdashery. This is how we do it. We got the fish tank behind us today. Um, Instead of the fireplace flaming because we wanted to have the fishies swimming around in the apartment in the haberdashery. That's all. So you got to come to the YouTube channel to see the fish tank. You got to see it. So he comes in to fix the sink because the other one was leaking and it got worse after the frozen tundra winter out here in Dallas, Texas came and the pipes expand and the pipes contract. The pipes expand and the pipes contract and it creates cracks and crevices and gaps and little areas for water to seep out and cause you a lot of problems. Not to mention the aggravation. Every time you turn the kitchen sink on and you turn it off, it has this like overflow after regurgitation that I have to constantly take paper towels and dry it up and that's a process in itself (laughs) so he finally came out and changed it coming in with his dirty work boots on I mean the real work boots with the crevices that are like five inches deep on the treads and they hold all kinds of stuff in there maybe like 2.5 pounds of mud and you don't want it in your place long story short it happened anyway and he's on his back, and he's under the sink, and he's doing all his zippity doo da to fix my sink. And I notice the shoes. And I'm like, oh, no. So I know when he leaves, there's going to be little track marks here and there around the apartment where he walked through of dirt. Yeah, that's right. You know, the, uh, the weird planet dirt that's going on. You know, the variants. Of the dirt that's going on. The little extra little creepy crawlies that are in the air supposedly could be in my apartment now. (laughs) Okay, so that being said, you know, he didn't speak any English as some of the maintenance guys around here don't. But that's okay. I put my effort in with the Spanish that I know. Hola, como esta? Hey, muy bien. Y tú? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, nueve, diez. I do my best, just like when I had healthcare offices and we had the Creole in there. Bonsoir, monsieur. Huh? That's all. Uh, uh, you know, the Spanish was in there. Boca arriba, boca abajo. You got the face up, the face down. Respire profundo. Take a deep breath. Relájese. Relax. Huh? Couché sudo, couché souvent. That's the Creole face up, face down. So we did our part. And I love the languages, by the way, and I wish I was better at 
the conversational part, but I still do it. We still find our ways to communicate with one another. Like one of the maintenance guy comes around here, and I've known him for a long time. No zero English. I mean zero. No attempt, but we laugh. He loves Bodhi. Bodhi loves this guy. And we find a way to communicate. And it's interesting how you can get it done by pointing, by signaling, by doing visual diagrams and get yourself through it. But don't be, you know, listen, you got to try. Not every, look, it is what it is. You do the best you can. Because getting along is better than not getting along. Don't be such a whatever. You know, we live in a crazy planet. And, you know, until we get to Mars and we live with the Jetsons, this is how it's going to be over here. So he comes in with the dirty boots, right? And uh, this is another maintenance guy. Comes in, fixes it, and looks at me, and he says to me, you have something clean. And I said to myself, what's he talking about? And then I noticed as he took the old unit off, it had a bunch of schmutz on the sink. Rust, goop, um, gasket, whatever from, I don't know, 75 years ago. (laughs) So I gave him some of this cleaner I had on that I had. It has this like the lime away kind of stuff. Supposed to take off whatever and some paper towel, and he sprayed it on there. Obviously, you needed a little wire brush. You needed some kind of abrasive uh, sponge or scratch pad to get it off, but he didn't want to go the extra mile. That's not what this place is all about. So he did a wipe with the towel and a little bit of the, um, the lime away stuff, and it got most of it off, but not around the edges because this new... Um, sink that he brought was not the same size. It was a little smaller. So the rust trim, as I'm going to call it, which is part of my new decoration in my kitchen, you know, you got the granite tops, which I don't have. You know, you got the nice, beautiful wood cabinets, which I don't have. And, you know, you got the nice, fantastic faucets and the and your little fancy, uh, you know, you don't have to, you just put your hand underneath it and the water comes out and all that fancy schmancy, which I do not have. So the trim that he installed unintentionally seems to fit in my little rustic haberdashery. That's how you do it. Yeah, I could go around there with my little toothbrush and do my little thing. But, you know, it seems to go with the decor. (laughs) And that's what we're doing. So in honor of my maintenance guy with the dirty feet, which I had to clean up and vacuum and do carpet cleaning and all this other stuff when he left... I'm very thankful for changing my sink, but not thankful for the mess. Anyway, you can't have everything. And that being said, I just thought of a little zippity doo dah song that uh, kind of fits the Spanish, the our, our communication problem. And uh, I don't know, I just kind of came up with something fun and weird, just so you don't take the stress too seriously and you put your little zippity doo on it, as we do over here, Dean Bodie. We invented the zippity doo song. So I said to myself, after he left, Meta, I ate a giant tomato. Giant tomato. I ate a giant tomato. Come on, tater. I also had a potato. Along with tomato, I had a giant potato. Oh, yeah, made up. So I made a song like that to clean out the cobwebs and remove the stresses and have fun with the process. That's how we do it over here, Dean Bodie. And uh, let me tell you, man, all kinds of stuff is happening over here. I don't even know how to get it all dialed in there's so much going on because you know um just a lot going on the tv i had i learned something new something called screen burn that's right fasten your seatbelt everyone there's something called screen burn 
that you get in your OLED or QLED big screen TVs, if you leave a picture, the same picture on there too long, as we like to do over here with the atmosphere, I had a beach scene. A beach scene of a palm tree and all kinds of things, which is my favorite one. Bodhi likes it. Bodhi's chilling by the beach. We got this kind of tropical atmosphere going with the big screen in the living room. And it creates a kind of nice, relaxing environment in the Dean Bodhi haberdashery. We like it. Just like the fish tank behind me today, we're in the undersea, undersea world of the, uh, you know, different kind of vibe. So leaving that one tropical thing on there too long, it left the imprint of the palm tree on my TV. So as I was switching the channels, I noticed the imprint of the palm tree was on every channel. It's called screen burn. I didn't know about it, but I said, okay, I'm going to go ahead to the Google and I'm just going to type in um, a picture imprinted on TV permanently and I this is see what comes up screen burn <laughs> so I learned something new about screen burn long story short with the tv I had to get the geek squad to come out replace the tv I did not have the warranty which does cover screen burn by the way of those of you that don't know and they didn't tell me about the screen burn why would you make tv sony samsung whoever Knowing that it's going to be screen burn, I only had the thing not even two years, and you're going to send them out anyway. Isn't this part of all the game that we play? This way you buy more TVs. This way Best Buy can jump on there and say, oh, do you have the protection plan? And I can say, no. Oh, because it covers the screen burn. You mean the screen burn you didn't tell me about when I first bought the set? Yep, that's the one. Okay, well, here you go. Another whatever to pay for a new TV. An expense I didn't need, but I got it done. And guess what? Now that I asked the right questions, which TV am I going to have to get that doesn't have the screen burn and has the motion dialed in? Because on a previous episode, I talked about how I went from a Samsung to the Sony. Because Samsung didn't have the motion dialed in. I'm like, what's going on? He's saying zippity doo da, and his mouth is saying hippity hoo ha, and it's not lining up. Oh, yeah, that's right. Samsung, uh, the motion, they don't have it dialed in like Sony. Oh, okay. Why are you sending them out then? You know? So I went from Samsung. <laughs> QLED to Sony OLED. Now we learn about the OLED can get screen burn. What doesn't get screen burn, you ask? The LED. So I went with the Sony that has the motion dialed in and the LED, which does not have the screen burn, and now we're dialed in. This TV is a little bit brighter. It's not quite, doesn't have that deep, dark tones as the OLED, that yummy, delicious, fluid, nice picture. I got to admit, but I don't have to worry about screen burn. You can't have everything, boys and girls. Or whatever pronoun that we're using these days. Can't have everything. <laughs> so what are you going to do? It's crazy. Now, well, I'm on Facebook the other day, okay? And hey, Millie. Yeah. Did you hear about that screen burn he's talking about? I think we have that problem because we leave the atmosphere on and I noticed that the palm tree is on every station. I know, I was wondering what that was. That was screen burn. Thank you, Dean Bodie. Oh my gosh, Dean Bodie knows everything. So I'm on Facebook the other day, right? And, um... You know how some people post they'll post something, let's say like a spider, and they put it on there, and they'll say the, with the question, if you saw this in your house, what would you do? And then people chime in. One guy chimes in, and he says, oh, that's the, um, the two-horned uh, North American yellow spider. You don't want to touch that because if that bites you, it'll kill you in six seconds. And then the next comment below that is, no, that's the, um, that's the light yellow flower bouquet, beautiful 
um, beige spider from West Virginia. It's totally harmless. And I'm looking at all these crazy comments and I'm like, nobody knows, you know, what it is, but they just want to start this crazy conversation. So I decided, Dean Bodie style, to chime in. And I said, you know what it is? It's the Eensy Beensy Spider. Oh! And we pulled out of there. That's all we said. And we waited. All I got was a little click and a little like that they liked my thing. And then I thought about this for a second. Excuse me. I thought about this for a second. And I'm getting a little worked up over here because this is exciting. And I said to myself... Thinking about the nursery rhyme, is it Eensy Beensy Spider or is that the right thing? Before I go any further, I just, I know what you're thinking, boys and girls, okay? But I looked it up just to be sure. And it turns out I stand corrected. It's not Eensy Beensy Spider, it's Itsy Bitsy Spider. Oh, so I went back to that Facebook post. And I corrected myself on there. I said, (laughs) underneath my remark, I stand corrected. It's not Eensy Beensy Spider. It's Itsy Bitsy Spider. That's what it really is. And I got one little like out of that and no other dialogue. I guess it got to be a little bit too much fun for Mr. Oh, the spider. What would you do if you saw the spider? Look, relax. All right? <laughs> so, there you go. Hey, arachnoid nomenclature for a thousand, Alex. Oh, what's got two horns on the top of its head, one horn sticking out of the back of its neck, and it's got seven eyes and nine legs? Oh, Alex, that would be the Eensy Beensy spider. Wrong, Bill. Susie, for the, for the win. Uh,. That's the Itsy Bitsy Spider, Alex. That's right. You go on to Final Jeopardy. Oh, yeah. The Itsy Bitsy Spider went up the water spout. Out came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the Itsy Bitsy Spider went up the spout again. Oh, yeah. She's the good girl, Bodie. She's the best girl in the world. Oh, yeah. The good girl, Bodie. Yeah. The best girl in the world. Oh, yeah. DeanBodie.com. 800-878-9698. The Bodie Hotline Fun Line. Call the Bodie Fun Line. Say something fun, and we'll make it a feature on the show. How's that? If you like what's going on over here, consider subscribing. Click the like button. Ring that notification bell. You don't want to miss any of these shows, because these are real shows. And, you know, go to the... Um, On the podcast, if you would, a nice five-star rating and review would be very nice. And, um, you know, we're bringing you some fun entertainment, and this is how we do it over here. We're parked on the corner of Goofy Land, Wacko Street, and Nutty Avenue. That's where we live over here, and we're going over there to Wackadoo Park, and we're going to hang out together. That's how we're going to roll and learn some fun things and have some knowledge. And we go all over the place, Dean Bodie, as we do Dean Bodie style. And we've decided here, Dean Bodie, not only have we invented the Zippity Doodah song, okay, but we also want to say if you want to put Dean Bodie's stamp on something, you just have to end it with, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, that's how we do it. So let's say anything. You could be talking to somebody on the phone. And, uh, oh, how you doing today, Millie? What's going on? How you doing? Oh, that's nice. Well, you have a great day. Oh, yeah. And that's the Dean Bodie stamp. You just have to end it, put that exclamation point, oh, yeah, on it. And that's how you do Dean Bodie style. And um, sing your little zippity doo song and clean out the cobwebs. Don't let the stress latch on. We got our lab work back, gang. I had all my labs done. The CBC, the full metabolic panel, even some special markers. Like I had my um, uric acid levels checked and I had my cortisol levels checked because I just came out of this adrenal gland insufficiency going from practically being in a wheelchair, couldn't walk, 
to bouncing back, and guess what? All the labs are normal. Did you hear what he said? All the labs are normal. You know, keep the nutrition going. Don't let anything get you down. Stay consistent and stay in the zone. Labs are normal. Bodhi's labs came back and all normal. Bodhi's going through some allergy stuff still. We got a follow-up visit with the doggy dermatologist coming up to figure out what the next move is for Bodhi. So we can get into the next season and when these crazy weeds out here and this pollen comes coming down again for Bodhi, she doesn't have as hard of a time as she did this season. We're going to get it figured out. I have allergy problems too from when that pollen comes down. Out here in Texas, it comes raining down. And it could be, I don't know, you know, different molds, pollens and grasses and yellow dock tree and this and that with all the crazy names that I really can't even pronounce. Unbelievable what's going on. So, Bodhi, the beautiful white wolf from Japan, has got planted out here in Dallas, Texas, and her DNA and immune system has to learn how to fight these things off. And it will, because we got the serum going, two pumps in the morning, two pumps at night. We're doing all these things. We got the groomer coming out, so Bodhi has beauty parlor day on Friday, so she can do that hypoallergenic shampoo and cream rinse to hydrate the, the folliculi, the hair follicles to soothe the folliculi, the hair follicles, to comfort and moisturize and hydrolyze Bodhi's skin. We're doing everything we can. I'm never going to let Bodhi down. It's not going to happen. I come back, I'm on the comeback trail with my labs and my health. Bring it on. Let's go. It's always going to be something. So, you know, anytime you want to have fun, you go downtown, pop, downtown, yada da da downtown. Everyone's going that place. Forget all your troubles, forget all your cares, da 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 Downtown, dancing and laughing, and we're singing and running, and we're playing around downtown. So. <laughs> I don't know, man. Between Bodie, me, and all this stuff going on, the guy came in to change the sink yeah, and all this fun stuff. We're doing it on the nutrition. Laird Hamilton's in the house. Hey, Laird, how you doing? Nice job with the functional coffees and the jumpstart stuff and the um, superfood creamers. It's along the lines of the Bulletproof guy. I make the Bulletproof coffees with the grass-fed butter and the MCT oil, okay? And the coffee is called Bulletproof Coffee. Oh, yeah. You get the good healthy fats. You get the whole nine yards in there. And um, it's a delicious treat. Um, make your coffee a nutritional supplement now. It's kind of the wave a little bit now as you see some of these people are coming out with these pods that fit in the machines that have it in there. How cool. But we tapped into Laird's stuff. Laird, giant wave surfer. This guy is about as brave as it gets. Surfers rock. These guys that do these big waves, he's out there in Hawaii and uh, changed, I don't know, flipped the surfing community on its head when he rode this one giant wave one time, came out the other side and said, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah and he put the dean Bodie stamp on it but he's got these creamers now he's got functional coffees oh they have rhodiola in it a nice powerful antioxidant helps with the brain problems and different types of things and depression and fights off other stuff like dementia and cancer and diabetes and all this yummy stuff we have coffee cherry another antioxidant that does some wonderful things in the coffee by the way um he also has the lion's mane mushroom in there that does another thing in there and cranks up your immune system and all the, in the functional coffee before you put the superfood creamer in there. Wow, what are you kidding me? So my mental clarity has, I'm telling you right now, the mental clarity is better than it's ever been. My energy took a major shift. Like I went from... Adrenal gland insufficiency. You don't know what it is. Look it up because it's a monster. Okay. 
my legs, because I had the muscle atrophy and all, have not come back fully yet. We're getting closer. We're this close a smidge away from getting back into the gym. So it's all good, man. And we're moving forward. But the mental clarity, I've noticed a big change. Now, I got to talk about Laird and his stuff a little bit more because um, he has this stuff called Morning Jump Start. And most of the stuff that you get, it's a tablespoon. He's got um, coconut water that's in a powdered form. You take a tablespoon, you put it in your little magic bullet blender. If you don't have one, get one. They rock. And I have a regular blender, too, for the coffees. But the little magic bullet, you put the tablespoon of the, um, of the coconut powder water in there, fill it with water, you blend it up, and you hydrate, baby. Hydration, because dehydration causes a whole laundry list of health problems. But he also has this jump start, this morning jump start stuff. It's got lemon in it. It's got ginger. It's got cayenne pepper. It's got what in it? cayenne pepper and some things like that to get you jacked and to clean out your system to get that thermogenic effect going to get you hydrolyzed mesmerized and hypnotized so you can start your day with some zippity doo dah and um so i thought i'm thinking okay it's probably a tablespoon so when i first tried it Okay, I put a tablespoon of the coconut water powder in the magic bullet. I took a tablespoon of this morning jump start with the cayenne in it, dumped that in there, filled it with water, and I made it. And I guzzled it down. And you want to talk about jacked the cayenne. I was like, man, does he really think we can drink this? And then I said, you know what, maybe we should read the instructions just to make sure. And it turns out that the morning jump start with the cayenne pepper was a teaspoon. Not a tablespoon, a teaspoon. Of course it was. Why not read it? Because you assume. Don't assume. Always check. You know what they say about assume? It's an asp before you and me. <laughs> so anyway... A little bit too much. Yeah, of course I survived it. If anything, my body probably needed that extra, uh, you know, zippity doo dah and my hoo ha. So, as I was saying, Laird, nice going. You got some great products out there. I'm loving them all. So far, I'm loving them all. The Bulletproof Guy, Day of Asprey. Love all your stuff. We're rocking and rolling, man. I'm having a lot of fun with this nutrition. So, everything I'm doing now has a nutritional mindset, whether it's the coffee, whether, you know, you're making your eggs and I'll do a little bit of the uh, bulletproof grass fed ghee and put that in the pan and all these things, you're getting some healthy fats and all, you know, you got a little mindset of the bodybuilding mindset. You got the mindset of the keto. You got some mindset of the paleo. You got the mindset of, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, what's his name from the from the Zone Diet? Uh, Barry Sears, I think Dr. Sears. Um, and uh, you know, you you pick it from from a little bit here and there, and use it and customize your life, because not everything is so cookie cutter. So notice how you're feeling, and do different regimens and all. Understand that all the philosophies are dialed in, but you have to kind of watch. Because, like, I go through different gout flare-ups and things. You can't just have all the red meat and all that stuff that you want. I'm telling you, I've done it. Personal experiences dictate what works for you, right? Obviously, the stuff you got to stay away from that's bad for you, that goes without saying. But you have the mindset of the cheat meal once a week, Give yourself a little treat so you don't go cuckoo bird. There's something satisfying about, oh, every once in a while you have a piece of chocolate cake, for example, or a few chocolate chip cookies, or you dive into some Ben and Jerry's. It does something to you psychologically. You don't have to turn into a crazy person, but you don't do it all the time. Not too many days in a row. 
of the taboo foods. Oh, yeah, because that's when you run into trouble. That's when you have too many days in a row, too, some people have too many years in a row like that, and you end up with type 2 diabetes, other health problems, things break down, can't do it, can't live off of spicy Cheetos and diet Mountain Dew for 30 years and expect to just keep going, and you're doing a pack of cigarettes and all this other stuff, and, you know, come on, man, sooner or later, it's going to happen. But the thing is, or the alcohol and all of that, we're going on five years clean and sober this year, baby, and we love it. I love it, but I don't get too cocky about it. It's a long road one minute at a time. Let me say that again. It's a long road one minute at a time, not one day at a time. It's one minute at a time. Because you always have to check yourself. It's always going to be there. But I like to look at it like I had some great memories from all of that. It's not all this negative stuff. Great times, great memories. But when you start, it starts affecting your life or on a personal level or financial level or in health level, you know, that's when you got to make a change. Otherwise, you're asking for it. That's really what it comes down to. And as we get older... The pipes aren't as clean. The organs are not as in, um, functioning as at their optimum like they once were. Things change. Pay attention, adapt, and do some good things. So, you know, with the new nutrition and the supplementation, it's so important. You have to put something back in. And you know what? If I eat something, let's say like a sandwich or whatever, I'm taking the digestive enzymes with it so my body can break it down and things like that. You still have these things you can use even when you're kind of doing a cheat meal or whatever to help your body break it down and digest it better. You know, that's why I use the digestive enzymes from OHS. And that's why all this other stuff that I'm using, the Bulletproof supplements, and I got layered with the... um the different uh, functional coffees now and all of these superfood creamers you can use and put in. Come on, man. It's out there, baby. Boom. And I'm feeling so fired up and my brain is firing on all 55 cylinders. And over here, Dean Bodie, we're rocking in and rolling. So I got to go back to this eensy beensy spider, but it's really itsy bitsy. As I was going through that process. Now, look, you could not write the script any better if it was a movie. I get out of the shower the other day, and I look up. What do I see? Okay, look, you don't have to believe me. I'm just telling you what really happened because I'm still blown away by it. I get out of the shower. I look up. What do I see? Two, not one, but two itsy-bitsy spiders. I was like, they must have heard me singing the song, you know? So I look up there, and before I grab them with the tissue and put them in the turlet to flush them down into turlet land, I said, you know what? Why don't we just go a cappello? Let me call Bodie over. And let me ask the two little spiders to sing along with me. Since we have four, we'll call it a quartet, and we'll do our little a cappello itsy bitsy song. So we did it. And we did. We said, we sang it together. Itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Out came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Then I grabbed the two little itsy bitsy spiders with the tissue, put it in the turlet, flushed the turlet, and said, listen, guys, I'll see you on the other side. You'll come out and wherever, that's, wherever the, uh, the water takes you, have a great life. But you can't live here. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> oh man Let, we should do something fun right now when it comes to um a-l-e-x-a -E let's see what's going on over there uh just to have a little fun maybe with a knock knock joke would be kind of cool i think hey alexa tell us a knock knock joke okay here we go knock knock who's there luke luke who Luke, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's the Millennium Falcon. Whoosh. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's the Millennium Falcon. Whoosh. Wow. 
Not Superman. It's the Millennium Falcon. All right, A-L-E-X-A. Put the little twist on there, didn't we? You got a lover. The sidekick who knows everything, pretty much. So what's funny is that the new TV that I got now that does not get screen burn, LED, FYI, is actually communicating with A-L-E-X-A better than the other one did. I don't know. What are you going to do? You keep going with the technology. Bodhi is the greatest of all time, and we're going through it together, and we're going to come out the other side. I love Bodhi so much. Have I not said that yet today? If I haven't, I love Bodhi more than anything. Oh, yeah. So let's see what's going on over here, Dean Bodhi. Um, we got a few more things I wanted to talk about. Zippity doo da, zippity yay. My oh my, what a wonderful day. Plenty of sunshine coming our way. Zippity doo da, zippity yay. Oh man, the French press coffee techniques. Oh man, you got some coffee geeks out there. Jellyfish. <laughs> okay. I heard a guy say jellyfishes the other day, and I almost fell out of my you know what. It's not jellyfishes, it's jellyfish. Let me say it again. It's not jellyfishes, it's jellyfish. Hey, look, Bill, look at all the jellyfish over there. You don't say look at all the jellyfishes. Yes, there's a lot of fishies in the sea, but it's jellyfish. You don't say, oh, here come um, the sheeps. Here comes the sheep, right? Look at all the sheep. Not look at all the sheepses. <laughs> so anyway, I got a kick out of that. That's why we had the aquarium behind me today. And we're doing a little bit underwater aquarium background. You got to come over to the YouTube channel to see what's going on there. Hey, come on, man. You got to come check it out. We're well over 200 episodes now. We're, uh, I don't know, uh, on the podcast and the YouTube. The YouTube's a little bit higher number because well let's just get the real number hey what do you think this is some kind of crazy land we're doing the youtube we're going on episode 219 wow and the podcast we're going on episode 210 how cool is that the numbers are going up every day you guys and uh, I couldn't be happier with the way things are going. We appreciate you so much over here, Dean Bodie. We love you. Call the Bodie hotline, the fun line, 800-878-9698. Say something fun. That's all you got to do, and we'll make it a feature on the show. Say something fun, and we'll make it a feature on the show and have a good time over here. Clean out the cobwebs. We'll sing zippity doo songs and... Put the Dean Bodie stamp on it. Oh, yeah. When you want to Dean Bodie something, you know? So the coffee baristas, the geeky coffee people out there, you learn from them, baby. You learn from everybody. So let me make a little adjustment here and put that there. We'll put this up on the screen here and we'll put this back over here. And there we go. Okay. So um, I have a French press with the coffee. Sometimes I do it with just Starbucks instant coffee packets, the Veranda Blonde, because the Blonde Roast has highest in polyphenols. Not the super dark that you can have. It's too burnt and it has less polyphenol, but the light roast has more. Okay? And again, organic is going to be better, right? Because you don't want whatever the molds or the, the pesticides or whatever in there. You want to try to make it as nice as you can. So sometimes I'll use the instant coffees and then I'll put that concoction in the blender along with the creamers and everything. But sometimes I like to use the French press. It's a, pro it's a meditative process. It's a, like a ritual. You get into it a little bit and get a little kind of geek out on the coffee, right? So the French press, I made it the other day and I pour it and it's leaking all over the place. I'm like, what happened to my, uh, my French press? Do I have to order another one? Is it broken? So I'm getting all bent out of shape because it's never happened before. And I thought maybe the plunger thing is cracked and it's leaking out the side. Anyway, I go on YouTube. Let's see what's going on with the French press. So 
One guy is doing his whole zippity doo dah on it, and these guys are getting the scale out, weighing their coffee, French press, with the coffee in there, so many grams to so much water. Listen, two tablespoons and done, okay? You don't have to get into all this weighing stuff. To me, is not necessary. But you can geek out if you want. And we get into where, and I had it mostly right. Everything was dialed in. You put the coffee in, right? Some of these guys, they'll put the hot water in there first, swirl it around to heat up the uh, the French press first, dump that out, and then they go in to put the coffee in and put a little bit in there and make a little, uh, what do you call it, a little swirl, right? Stir it around a little bit and let that steep for like 30 seconds. That's what I do. I don't put the hot water in first. I just put the coffee in, put the... Uh, a little bit, like a quarter of the way up, hot water, make a little slurry, right? And tell A-L-E-X-A to set the timer for 30 seconds. Then when that goes off, I fill it the rest of the way right to the bottom of that silver rim, okay, on there. Oh, they all have them, the silver rim, the bottom part. And I tell A-L-E-X-A to set the timer for four minutes, and you let it steep. Some people say don't put the plunger on there, just let it steep without it. Some put it on there and leave it there. And this one guy decides he's not even going to push the plunger down, Mr. Coffee Geeker, French press crazy person. He's just going to leave it there because if you push it down, you're going to stir around the grains some more, the coffee grounds some more, and make more of a cloudy coffee. And I'm like, seriously? So I tried it his way. And uh, I don't know, he was kind of right, but the most fun part about the whole French press is pushing the plunger down, and you push it down slowly. So, hey, I put a little comment, as I like to engage once in a while, and I just said, you know what, I'll meet you halfway. I'll push the plunger down halfway, and we'll do it from there. (laughs) But anyway, what I like to do is, after I go four minutes, put the plunger on there, Push it down nice and slow. And very important tip I learned why it was leaking is because you got to make those little slits, the little vent, face the opening, the pour spout, <laughs> so, so it comes out nice. I wasn't thinking about that for some reason. I didn't, I didn't realize there was even slits. I must have got lucky the last, I don't know, 30 times in a row. So then I put the slits in there. It came out perfect, and uh, my French press is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong. But thank you very much, Coffee Geeks, because you're teaching me stuff. And it's fun using that thing and doing all these fun nutritional coffees. And this is how you do it to fortify your life and help yourself nutritionally. That mental clarity and mental focus between the ears is everything because that kind of keeps you dialed in so you can handle stuff. And all these different herbs and you're putting in the coffee and different stuff like that, the healthy fats, helps your nervous system big time. Listen, man, your nervous system controls everything in your body. You think it's kind of important? Do you think you want to kind of take care of it? And I'm noticing a big change as I shifted gears okay, into another level of mental clarity. I'm feeling good. Labs are normal. Bodhi's labs are normal. Both of us with the allergy from time to time, we'll figure it out as your body's going to fight things off. And that's how we do it over here, Dean Bodhi Haberdashery. Man, we had a great time here today. And uh, uh, (laughs) it was too funny with the whole thing. And uh, the last funny thing I want to talk about, I go to Tom Thumb, I go shopping. And I have to go to the bathroom really bad after I had a Starbucks coffee. Hello. (laughs) So I went in there and it's a filthy mess in this bathroom. Let's be honest. Somebody hasn't changed this place in the last hundred years. It looks like they don't have any and all this stuff with the COVID schmovid pandemic schmandemic. You think you'd have it a little bit more dialed in, other than telling people to wear the masks or whatever. No toilet seat cover that you can put on there. They don't even have that dispenser to line the toilet. They don't have nothing there. So you go through the dilemma now. So what I do, (laughs) I take toilet paper 
and line the seat. And you put one little piece in the middle to cover your zippity doo da hoo ha okay? So nothing touches whatever. Who knows how many people are going in and out of these places? But when you got to go, you got to go, baby. So I do all that lining, but then you have to touch the handle to flush it. So you have to figure out the timing and all that so you can stand up, push the handle down with your foot, and let it go down. Then you turn around and you're like, "Uh uh-oh, now I got to touch the door handle to get myself out of this place. Take a sheet of toilet paper so you don't have to touch the handle and you can exit. What a project, okay? Then I'm going to go wash my hands, okay? And you go through the whole thing with the air dryer and all this other stuff with the antibacterial soap and um, with the, um, what do you call it? These are another uh, issue there. You want to have the one where you stick your hand on the water automatically comes down. You do the air dryer thing. And then you're like, you want to get out of the bathroom. You got to grab the door handle to the bathroom. One place was smart the other day at the doctor's office. When I went to get my labs done, they had a little trash can right next to where you exit. (laughs) <laughs> special because they know people are going to rip off a little piece of towel, grab the door handle, crumple it up and drop it on the floor so they can leave there without touching everything. If we're going to have mask rules and, you know, we're not walking around with gloves everywhere, set the stations up so they make sense. Nobody wants to go through all this hand washing and all, then touch the handle that 1,000 people have touched that have all kinds of different creepy crawlies all over their body. So, let me tell you, while I was in the bathroom at Tom Thumb, the last thing you want to hear when you're going through all this COVID focus and lining everything so you don't touch anything, here comes the whistler. The whistler comes in the bathroom. Whistle while you work. And he's whistling the most annoying song nobody knows because he wants to let everybody know that he's happy and in a good mood. What he is is, oh, I don't know, crazy person. So I'm listening to the whistler while I'm figuring out all this toilet paper lining stuff. Finally, he leaves and I can come out and do my thing and do the very last towel rip off, open up the door. And exit, what a, what a series, series of decisions that we're going through these days. I mean, we kind of did it a little bit already, but now that we have all this going on, are we really taking this that seriously? It's really getting to be a little ridiculous. So watch out for the variants and watch out for this. Don't listen to Dr. Fettuccini. The guy's out to lunch. Okay? So, listen, I had a great, we had a great time here today, Dean Bodie Show. I hope you did. And uh, like I said, if you like what's going on over here, consider subscribing. Click the like button. Ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of these shows because these are real shows. We're coming at you here, Dean Bodie, and we're moving forward and having a great time. And as we want you to and learn a little things along the way, not just zippity doo songs, but things about nutritional stuff, how to heal, things to pay attention to, coffee making, um, All the other stuff in between, as we do over here, Dean Bodie, we take it where it goes. We go where it takes us. You know what I'm saying? We sing sing the Itsy Bitsy Spider song, the Zippity Doodah song, and get through the day like nobody else does. Who doesn't like Dean Bodie? Nobody. (laughs) So listen, have an awesome day. DeanBodie.com, 800-878-9698, Bodie Funline. Say something fun. We'll make it a feature on the show. Say your first name, where you're from. Hey, that's how we're going to do it over here, Dean Bodie. Have an awesome day today. Talk to you soon. Bye now. Oh, yeah.